Rachel is at school, so nights like this we'll do some other studies, see what the Lord would have us to go, but I don't want to advance in Jeremiah to Hayward Family Ministry without her. I mean, we've been many, many, many years going through chapter and chapter. So tonight I want to look at a lesson, and some people probably saw knickknacks wallpaper. What on earth? First Kings chapter 6 verse 29. And what we're doing is we're looking at Solomon who has built or is in the process of building the temple in Jerusalem. And what we're going to look at is you can have things. But don't let your things get ahead of God. And we can't be so I don't know, say it, you know, well, we gotta have bare white walls. We can't have wall wallpaper. We can't have nothing. We can have things. But we can't let our things get ahead of God. Now look at Solomon when he builds the temple. First Kings six twenty nine. And he carved all the walls of the house round about, carved with figures of cherubims. Those those angels, they're not babies. You find them in Ezekiel and Revelation. Palm trees, open flowers within and without. Now, bear with my, my glasses and my eyes. Verse 32, 1 Kings 6.32. And the two doors of the temple also were of olive tree, and he carved upon them carvings of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers. It matched the walls and overlaid them with gold and spread gold upon the cherubims and upon the palm tree. And one place here again, verse 35, if my handwriting is right. And he carved there of cherubims, palm trees, open flowers. Now which Solomon does is he's done a spectacular wallpaper for the for the temple for the house of the Lord is their actual carvings of the cherubims of palm trees of flowers there is a design now the design the wallpaper uh, if you got paneling or however you decorate your house that's not a sin. Now we know later on the temple will be turned into, there will be altars, plural. There will be the worship of the moon, the sun, and the stars. You know there will be all kinds of foreign, false priests and prophets. Now that's wrong. But to say... In a bedroom, you know, we got pretty flowers or stripes or doodads. That's not wrong. Now, for a children's room, if you were to have cartoon characters that the child loves or cars that the child loves, then you're on shaky ground because that's what the child loves. That's what the child favor and there is a possibility that you can now have your child go overboard and we'll, and we'll, we'll move on and look at what we're looking at in Matthew the gospel of Matthew 24 verse 1 and 2 now again we're, look, we're looking at the temple the temple was to focus you to God, not the temple. And there's a lot of Baptist churches, oh, it's being the house of God, being the house of God. And I've been in Baptist churches where the only house of God is their church building. No other church building but their church building. That's foolish. Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him to show him the building. Of the temple. So there are other buildings of the temple. Now we'll go over to Mark. 
I want you to get where we're at. Mark chapter 13, I hope. I'm sure it can't be 18. One and two. I'm sorry with my, my, my health. My handwriting's terrible. My handwriting was terrible before. It is horrible now. Please pray for me and my help. As he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are. Look at the beauty of this place. Isn't it magnificent? And he answered said unto him, See thou the great buildings, plural, there shall not be left one stone upon another. They shall not be thrown down. The temple is going to be destroyed in 70 AD, but, you know, Jesus, who is God, see the magnificent buildings, see how wonderful and great, how wonderful they are. And Jesus is like, yeah, they'll be gone. In reality, everything that is today, would it be wood, plastic, stone, metal, concrete, whatever it is, and whatever beauty or form that it is, when the heavens and the earth are burnt up with a fervent heat, it's all gone. Revelation 21. Revelation 21, 18. <clears throat> Excuse me. New Jerusalem. Revelation 21, 18. The building of the wall was of jasper. A city with pure gold, like unto clear glass. Transparent gold. Pure gold is transparent. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Chaldothene, the fourth Emerald, Green, the fifth Sardic, the sixth Sar Sardonyx, the sixth Sardis, the seventh Crestolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth Tobas, the tenth Chrysophorus, the eleventh Jacksonin, twelve Amherst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Now, do you think that the beauty of New Jerusalem is when we get to New Jerusalem that it would be taking our eyes off God? Do you think, as Jesus came out of that temple, you think in the, in the New Jerusalem, when we have been made perfect, it's our eternal home? You think, hey, Jesus, do you see the balls, how great they look? And the, it ain't going to be like that. Now, it's a beautiful, colorful spot, but the focus in New Jerusalem is not the walls and the stones and the pearls. It is God, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit. Those walls and those, those pearls and those gates are not going to catch our attention. As, I mean, listen, the disciples we read in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, they are with God. They are with Jesus. I've never been with God. I never was with Jesus. They were. And you know what got their attention? You see how beautiful the temple is? And I imagine it was. And Solomon, he has, he has engraved the walls with cherubim and palm trees. And open flowers, but there's a greater beauty than what Solomon did in the gold and the olive tree doors. And that is the God that dwelt between the cherubims in the most holy place on the mercy seat. That's what's important. Now, where is the realm? And I want to look at four places, the realm. And we're going to look at an interesting word. Or two words, actually. Deuteronomy 8, 19. We're going to look at two words. 
is my wallpaper just wallpaper you know I like it I like the color I like the design or is my wallpaper God for my children is the deco of their room hey, it's just a child's room they can have fun or is it to them is it their God where is the line of design and where is the line of idolatry how do I know that I am an idolater with the things in my home that seem so innocent now in my home right now I look in my living room where I am I see paintings and I got two paintings here that my my wife deceased wife and my daughter did in the realm of the painting of the Bob Ross studio here in Florida I see some paintings that I did with my daughter with my wife well yeah with my daughter and my wife I think that was just my daughter and we did it at we went to art classes and we had the Joshua as for me in my house we will serve the Lord my daughter made for me Titus 213 plaque that uh, that's my that's my life verse my grandmother gave me a stained glass kind of thing I can't read it from here it has scripture on it but I can't see it from here we have a clock uh, and there's various other things we have a missionary we have something about our Chihuahua and a couple paintings that Rachel and drawings that she did and Painting that I did. You see behind me, he is risen. We love him because he first loved us. The way, the truth, and the life. Um, and we have scriptures. We have quotes from people of the ministry. We have curtains that don't or don't let in the heat in Florida and don't let in the light in Florida. So the things that are in my house here and the things that may be in your house. How do I know? Okay, it's just hanging on the wall. But, or how do I know? Okay, you know what? You know, my daughter made that for me, and I'm going to, you know, it's, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Don't get rid of it. And the day I die, I want to be buried with it. Uh, that's idolatry. Don't touch it. Don't get rid of it. So let's look at two words that will take an everyday object that we may have on our walls, in our house, and let's look at where it crosses the line that it becomes idolatry. Deuteronomy 8.19. In the next four verses, we're going to look at these two words. And there are other places in the Bible, but I grabbed these four. And it shall it be... I mean, like today, our, our Chihuahua, she got lost. She, and my daughter's looking for him, and I was looking for her. And, and I got to the point, you know, it's getting time, my daughter's time for her to go to school. But I can't find, well, what are we going to do? We can't do nothing about it. you got to go to school. Like I said, we got things about Chihuahua. Chihuahua's not our God. Now the things we get for her, and we, my daughter has a cat. You know, we got to get him food. We got some toys and all that. Okay, at what realm is Peanut, our Chihuahua, and Chloe, our cat? At what point are they just a dog and a cat, or are they our dollars? And there's two words, Deuteronomy 8 to 19. And it shall be, if thou do all, if, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God. Number one, that's not the word we're looking at, but if you forget the Lord. Within time, if what you have brings you to forget going to church, forget to pray, 
forget to read your Bible and forget to acknowledge God. The next two words that we're going to see will say, hey, that item may be idolatry. If it causes you to forget, now you got to buy things. You can't give all your 100% of your paycheck to the church, as some pastors would want you to do that. But you got to buy gas. You got to buy food. And if you got pets, you got to buy pet food. And you may have to buy other things. You may have to buy paint to paint a room that, for whatever reason. But if that item, let's call it a noun. What's a noun? A noun could be an everyday thing or it can be an idolatrous thing. What is a noun? It's a person, place, or thing. Realize a person, a human, can have you to forget God. I know people who have given up going to church for a family reunion. I know people who've given up serving the Lord because their family got upset with them. It caused hostilities. Well, I'm a Christian. I'll just, I'll just go to my family. I won't serve the Lord no longer to please my family. There are places that can cause you to get out of the, your job. If it causes you to forget the Lord, forget prayer, to forget the Bible and forget attending church, your job that is a place can be idolatry. If Wednesday nights will cause you to skip church for your son's baseball team or a daughter's dance routine, you need to get rid of the dance or the ball game or whatever it is that will have you not go to church. Because then that becomes idolatry. Get a person, place, or thing. Anything. If it has you to forget about the Lord God. Anything that will have you to do that. And walk after other gods. Now nuns. Person, place, or thing can be other gods. And serve them. That's the number one word we're looking at. Serve. You serve. You take care of them. You give them extra clean. You give them extra time. You give them extra money. You give whatever needs to be given to that now. I know as a Catholic that there are people who have the Mary on the half shell in their front yard and they are told if they keep Mary clean they get good points with God so they will serve that piece of plastic that piece of ceramic that piece of, of, con of concrete whatever that Mary statue they are serving that idol to please God. They are taking care of something more than taking care of the business of the Lord. I go to family outings, family reunions, family weddings, family whatever. I go to the family more reliable than I go do something for the Lord. That's serving. I will do whatever my boss tells me to do. I will do whatever my spouse tells me to do. I will do whatever my children tell me to do. I will do whatever my parents will tell me to do. But when God tells me to do something, no. As a result, you've forgotten God. And worship them. Now there's that second word. We're looking at two words, serve and worship them. Worship is whatever that noun is. 
you are adorned, you are fabricated of that now more than God. That you have actually taken God off the throne and put the noun in its place. And I said the danger of your child and simple wallpaper of a cartoon character is that child has now been four walls surrounded by something that he loved, something he liked. It has grained his attention. It has fascinated his, lie, his eyes and his life. That will cause him to forget about God. And that will cause him to serve that toy or whatever cartoon, wherever it is. Well, I've got to get more. i got to see more of its movie. Hey, he come out with a new movie. i got to go see that movie. I don't want to go to church. I want to go to the movie. Then worship. He draws pictures. People will set their income and their finances by their noun. Well, you know, if I get the whole collection of these, it'll be great for an investment. If I if I keep my money in this area, it's going to be a great investment. If I if I you know if I don't upset Aunt Dora, Aunt Dora, she you know she'll take care of me. And what about God taking care of you? What about gaining interest in memorizing scriptures? I know a woman who goes on cruises. Anything wrong with the cruises? Not if they cause you to forget God. Not if they cause that you serve that cruise. Or you worship that cruise. I know a woman who goes, where, wherever the port that ship is going to go, before that cruise, she will get the gospel track. In the language of those ports. So when she visits those ports, she'll be able to get gospel tracts out. And I know, because the whole family go. I know there are family, their whole dedicated year, that one trip. And it doesn't even bother them that there is no church services on those cruises. And when they go into ports, they don't even try to find a church. It's not even in there. They'll, they'll, they'll do the jet ski. They'll do the, the searching. They'll do the, the tours. They will do the entertainment. But they won't even think about the Lord. That as their cruise, so is their vacation from God. And that when they come back, oh, we just spent so much having such a good, we're just so tired. We won't go to church Sunday. We need to rest. So two words is serve and worship, which causes you to forget God. Nouns, person, places, or things. Second Chronicles. What a boring book. No, it's not a boring book. Second Chronicles 7. You know these people that, oh, it's a boring book. And then they lose out on the food of the book. And it, and it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God. Not only can you forget the Lord God, but if you have walked away, you have forsook the Lord. You go in another direction. And this talk about Israel, the God of their fathers, which brought forth out of the land of Egypt, Israel, and laid hold on other gods, nouns, person, places or things and worship them there it is and serve them when you have other gods that you worship and you serve and you have forsaken you have forsook and you have forgotten God that now has become idolatry that noun has replaced God on his throne. You took God off the throne and put that noun, whatever that noun is, whatever that person, place, or thing, and you put that on God's throne. 
And there are people today, they are saved. They can't lose their salvation, but they have walked away from God. They have forgotten God, and they worship and they serve other nouns. Whatever it be, person, place, or thing. And it can be something as stupid as wallpaper for a child. I would not get a child character wallpaper. I get him a solid, a stripe, or, or a polka dot. Because whatever character, kind, or item, noun, wallpaper for a child, Satan, the devil, we could use that to be, ooh, I like that. You put cars up there. Oh, how could, Dad, you know, this Sunday they're having a car show. Yeah, and the time, you know, if we go to church, we're going to miss most of the show. So guess what the family may choose more for their child? I know of my years of being saved since 1997. I know Christians. Who don't serve the Lord no longer because of a person, place, or thing. And they, ne they never thought in the beginning where there would be. To and today they're just out of service because they've served something else. They're out of worship because they worship something more else. Now, like I said, I got stuff here, and it can stop me. We got stuck. We, we go out the door to go to church. Come on. Oh, it fell on the floor. Oh, well, I'll just pick it up. My, my door is it, something fell on the floor and it broke. Oh, oh well. Did we get another frame? I oh, can't. Yeah. Is it damaged? Oh, all right. If we can get another one, we'll get another one. If not, just throw it in the garbage. But if I got to change my whole schedule of serving God and worshiping God for the noun where's the priority Luke 4 Luke chapter 4 verse 8 now the biggest thing is you see this See that? That's a checkbook. Yeah. Jesus said in Matthew, every idle word, man shall give it account. You realize God's going to go through the checkbook one day? What's your checkbook say about your Christianity? What is your checkbook say who you worship and who you serve? It's sad among many Christians. There is more money spent on pet food than missionaries. There is more money put to a vacation than there is money given to their church. There is more money and from the checkbook recording given to a noun a person, place, or thing, then God has on the heavenly records of your offering back to Him. Your checkbook will say and will record. Oh, that's what I think of God. Oh, that's what I think of that now. That's what I think of that now. That's what I think of that now. Oh, that's what I think of God. That's what I think of that now. That's what I think of that now. Oh, that's what I think of God. That's what I think of that now. What's your checkbook say? Luke 4 8. 
Jesus answered, said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Whoa. For it is written, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and him shalt thou serve. There's your worship and there's your serve. Only to God. If a person, people, or a individual, or individuals, if they take the worship of God, if they take the service to God away and cause you to forsake or even cause you to forget, you are in idolatry. When the item that you have as a noun <coughs> <coughs> occupies your checkbook, more than the worship and the service of God in your checkbook, you are into idolatry. When your noun has specific, specific activities that interferes with church service, that will cause you to forsake and forget the Lord. And the worship of and the service to your now. That's idolatry. If you are more important to a thing. How people touch it. How people are around it. Then the word of God, then your service, then your 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 attitude towards God. If you are more prone to a clean house and make sure you take off your shoes and make sure you do this and don't put things there and don't sit there and you gotta have a, a blanket to sit there and you can't be in this spot, you can't do this spot and If your more desire is to clean room or clean house than a clean Christian life, you are in idolatry. When you will tell people more about your job, more about your car, you will brag so much about your child or your children. Then you witness about the Lord Jesus Christ in the gospel. Friend, you are in idolatry. Even come to church, come to church, come to church. That's not what Jesus said. He said, preach the gospel. Your church has become a worship and a service. And not the Lord Jesus Christ. People say, well, I, I, I can't speak about God. I can't speak about Jesus. And you brag about other things. You talk about other things. You're a liar. You can talk about other things. You can talk about other nouns. Why can't you worship the Lord God and serve Him? You're an idolatry. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Who, ch who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worship, there's the word, and serve, there's the word, the creature more than the creator. Science, education, has caused many to turn away from the creator and serve the creation. Save the whales. No, nope. Jesus said, I come to seek that which is lost. And he's not seeking lost whales. He's not seeking lost manatees. He's not worried about cockfights. He's not worried about how someone treats a dog. He's come to seek and lost the lost soul of a man who will die and go to hell. 
And the fact is, what is wrong with America? Our schools, all level of schools, teach the theory of evolution and don't even involve the creator and his creation. That, my friend, is idolatry. There are people, one of the, one, one of the, the, the gods of America, and God we trust. I'll tell you what one of the gods of America, education. Why? Because our American education excludes God. It excludes the Bible. It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. So you need to look at your noun. Is it a plain old noun? That you can serve God with a pure and clean heart that the Holy Spirit won't convict you? You're doing wrong. Or is your noun a hindrance to serving God? Does your noun cause you to forget God? Or will you forget God? Within time, will your noun turn you to forget about God, the Bible, Jesus Christ, and the prayer life? And to forget God, your noun has, is, or will have you forsake God. And when you forsake God, you will forget God because of a noun. A person, place, or thing, other gods. That even Jesus told the devil, you're supposed to worship and serve the Lord God Almighty. And then Paul tells us about evolution. 